What is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend and today we're going to be looking at the Adidas Ultra Boost 22. So four things to like about this model is number one, this has been one of my go-to models for shorter to mid-range runs. So if you're planning to run like one to four to five-ish miles, I really like how comfortable this model is and the overall ride it provides. The overall boost midsole gives you a nice bounce and if you're running outside or on a treadmill, this should be a great model for tackling shorter to mid-range runs. The second thing to like about this model is that we have the prime knit upper construction, which is kind of like a signature in a lot of the Adidas models and in the Adidas Ultra Boost line, but but the upper is also made with at least 50% of recycled materials. So if you are a bit more conscious of the materials sourced and used in your running shoes and training shoes, I think that's an awesome perk of this model. The third thing to like about this shoe is that this is the first Adidas running shoe designed by a full women's design team, which I think is awesome and I hate when companies just kind of blanket the last construction for a dude shoe make it for women so it's really cool to see this model be a little bit more tailored towards the women's running community I think that's gonna be an awesome addition to most runners lineup when it comes to this model but also just being more integrated in throughout 2022 2023 and onward when it comes to shoe construction and who the shoes are designed for the fourth thing to like about this model is that the overall continental rubber outsole and linear energy push system in this shoe gives it a nice level of pop. So if you're running on a treadmill, for example, or tackling runs outside and you're running uphill, you're gonna get a nice level of pop from the shoe. The linear energy push system in this model gives you a slightly more stiffer midsole construction, which I think if you're really digging into those toes and trying to really propel yourself forward, especially at a slight incline, this shoe feeds really well into that task. But now let's talk about a couple of cons I have noticed with this shoe. So three cons that I have with this model is number one, Adidas increased the price of the shoe to $190 USD. That is up $10 from the previous Ultra Boost 21. And personally, I think if you're just more of a recreational runner and you don't necessarily care about like the Ultra Boost tech and this model line, then you could probably find a more cost efficient Adidas running shoe that will match your needs well. Like there's a give and take there with the price because I do think the Ultra Boost has a slightly more signature feel to it. But again, 190 is pretty steep. The second con that I have with this model is that while I love this shoe is designed slightly more for the women's community and for women's feet the toe box is pretty narrow in the shoe and they brought down the instep a little bit so as you can see like we don't have a lot of space up here especially throughout the bottom of the midfoot into the forefoot and the toe box is pretty sharp so that being said if you have a wider foot you are likely not going to find the ultra boost 22 to be very comfortable and you might feel like it's almost suffocating your forefoot so you may want to look into other models for that reason because i don't even think if you size up this shoe will feel super comfortable in the con context of your wider foot anatomy. So my third con with this model is that I mentioned that I like this shoe for slight incline running and if you're on flat ground you should be plenty fine in the shoe. If you're running downhill outdoors, you might actually find the heel a little bit off-putting. So with this shoe, you do sit into this midsole, so it's not like you're sitting on top of this midsole up here. So you do sit into it and this shoe does cradle the foot a little bit. With how beefy this heel is, and even though they have this angled construction to limit impact, this overall heel construction and the 12 millimeter heel toe drop, I thought made for a pretty uncomfortable ride down hills, especially if you're trying to either one, put on the brakes really hard, or even pick up your pace, having that like really sharp drop and that really beefy heel just made for a slightly awkward transitioning between each stride. So just remembering context there, if you're running downhill a lot, which I doubt a lot of you are, that might be something that's a little bit off-putting with this model due to the thicker heel. But for the context of your running, I don't think it's gonna be a huge issue. Just something to note with this model and with the slightly more aggressive 12 millimeter heel toe drop and the heel construction. Now let's dive into the performance of the Ultra Boost 22. So when chatting on performance in this model, I think where it excels the most, at least in my opinion for running, is on shorter to mid-range runs that you're taking at a slightly faster paces. So I really like the boost midsole in this model and the LEP system, especially if you're doing like pickups or you're doing a very fast paced mile and then you're slowing down and then picking it up again. I think the construction of this model feeds really well into that style of training. 
Plus, with this rubber continental outsole, I do think this model will be a pretty good and durable model, especially if you're training outdoors a lot. There's not a ton of exposed midsole layer here. Like we do have a little bit up here in the forefoot, but truthfully, I think if you're limiting your running to more dry climates and dry road runs, you shouldn't have fast breakdown in this model whatsoever. I also like this shoe for just casual daily wear. And if you're tackling like home workouts or even class workouts, I think another area where the Ultra Boost 22 excels is that if you're that person who wants this shoe primarily for running, and let's say you work out at home with some lighter weight, etc., this is a good model for tackling that in. Not every running shoe can do that, but this model does an okay job. Just note that with the higher heel to toe drop, it will alter your mechanics slightly with some of your lower body movements. But for most folks, I don't think that's gonna be an issue whatsoever. So I do like that you can use this model for like more hybrid training if you're at the track or you're doing home workouts and you want it to run and you want it to do some light workouts, etc. And so overall, I like this model for short to mid range runs. And I also like that it can be a bit more versatile in nature when it comes to just daily wear or very light workouts. The upper construction, I think, hugs the foot really well. I did mention that if you have a wider foot, you might find them a bit uncomfortable, but for folks with narrow and neutral width feet, this model should fit the bill pretty well, and Adidas did make some construction changes with this shoe that makes it even a bit more comfortable, especially with this midfoot cage, for different movements, especially if you're doing squats, lunges, and then running in a more hybrid training fashion. So now let's answer the question, is the Ultra Boost 22 worth it? With their higher price point, should you invest in them? I think if you love the Ultra Boost line and you plan on wearing these for running and also maybe some daily wear and some hybrid workouts, then this model is worth it. What I would say though, is that if you aren't a fan of the Ultra Boost 21, then you're probably not going to like the 22. This model has subtle construction features that do make it better than the 21. However, like the core construction of it as a whole is very similar to the 21. So that being said, this model I think is worth it. If you like the Ultra Boost line and you liked how the 21 performed, I think this is a pretty good versatile model and the subtle changes that Adidas made on this shoe make it a little bit better than the previous model. But if you are somebody who wants to save a little bit of money and you weren't a fan of the 21, then you may want to look into other Adidas running shoes. So when chatting on sizing and fit in this model, it's really interesting because if you have a narrow or neutral foot, you should be safe going true to size. The length fits true. The only caveat is that with that lower instep and volume in the overall forefoot and midfoot, and with that slightly more narrowed toe box up here, more so designed for women's feet, you might feel the shoe is a little bit snug if you have a wider foot. So my wider footed runners, I don't know if this model is ever going to feel comfortable for you, so you may want to explore other shoes, but if you have a narrow or neutral foot width, you should be safe going true to size in the Ultra Boost 22. So when chatting on price in this model, we've already discussed it in the video, but you can expect to pay $190 USD. I think if you're a super fan of the Ultra Boost line and you liked how the 21s fit and performed, you will like this model a little bit better. And honestly, like $10 isn't great, but it's not the biggest change. However, if you are a bit more budget conscious, you can definitely find comparable running shoes from Adidas for way less. So if you do want to save a little bit of money, I would suggest looking into older Ultra Boost models or looking into other lines by Adidas. So when it comes to the weight, heel to toe drop, and the sock liner in the Ultra Boost 22, for my size 10 model, we have a weight of 12.25 ounces. The heel to toe drop in this model was said to be between 11 and 12 millimeters by Adidas customer support team. And then this model does have a removable sock liner. But again, with the overall like snugger volume in this shoe, especially throughout this instep here, you may find that if you have thicker orthotics, this model may not be the best pick for you. All right, so now let's go over the construction of the Adidas Ultra Boost 22. So up here on the toe, we have an extended outsole layer that wraps up. And then throughout the upper, we have this prime knit textile upper. Overall, it breathes decently well and does have a nice level of stretch to it. That's generally what you're gonna get with most knit. But again, with how snug this model is, even though that knit does have some stretch, I think if you have a thicker or wider foot, this upper still may feel a little tight and limiting. Making our way up here to the midfoot, we have four primary eyelets that run up. We have this plastic midfoot cage here that locks down the shoe. And then compared to the 21, they actually rounded this top part so you don't have as much dig into the ankle that you did with the previous model. And down here, they reworked this lacing system as well. Overall, I thought the midfoot provided fine support as a whole, and I don't 
don't think most folks will have an issue with this model's lacing system or how much support this midfoot cage actually provides. Making our way back here to the heel, we do have a plastic heel counter, and then they brought in the overall heel width a little bit. Because this shoe is designed for women, there are three different parts that are a bit different than the 21 in this model. One is being back here on the heel, it's a little bit more tapered in. Up here on the toe, it's a bit more tapered as well. And then the instep is a little bit more shallow in this model. Making our way to the midsole, we have the boost midsole throughout, then we have that LEP system to provide a slightly more stiff and rigid midsole construction. And then on the outsole, we have a stretch web outsole that's made with continental rubber. So as you can see, we have a full rubber texture here. We only have some layers of exposed midsole, which I personally like because a lot of my runs are outdoors. And then looking at the sock liner, once again, that sock liner does come out in this model. It's fairly thin. And once again, if you have thicker orthotics, that would be something to like tread lightly with this model because the instep is pretty shallow as a whole in this shoe. And then I think that's pretty much all of the big construction features in this model. I mentioned that the upper is made with at least 50% recycled materials. And as a whole, I think we hit on most of the big features in this shoe. But if you have any questions on this model's construction, hit me in the comments below and I will answer whatever you have. All right guys, that wraps up my review of the Adidas Ultra Boost 22. Overall, I have enjoyed this model for shorter and mid-range runs. They have been one of my favorites to take out on my faster paced 5Ks, but this model does have a couple of areas where it falls short. If you have any questions on this shoe, hit me in the comments below and I will gladly answer whatever you have or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always guys, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next one.